Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And welcome to Lexington, Kentucky and the Sweet 16. The first of our doubleheader coming your way tonight with the six seed Oregon State and the two seed Baylor Lady Bears who are riding a 30 game winning streak into tonight's matchup and an Oregon State team that had the biggest win in school history against Baylor in the NCAA tournament a couple years ago. Here's how things are shaping up. Mississippi State and NC State underway as well from Kansas City. And then our doubleheader here, the second half of that, the Cardinals and the Cardinal as Louisville comes in for the first time in school history as the one seed in this region. And we welcome you inside Historic Rupp Arena. Beck Mowens, Debbie Antonelli, we've got Allison Williams with us tonight. And Debbie, with Baylor and Oregon State, we've also got two of the best big girls in all of college basketball. We certainly have two great finishers around the rim. When you talk about play in March, you usually start with the guards. But for these two teams, it's the play on the interior at 6-5. Marie Gulich can get an ISO on the block. She can score with her left or right. She can change the game on the defensive end with her shot blocking ability. And for Baylor at 6-7, she's a lefty. They will get her the basketball on the left side of the floor. She's a terrific finisher. You've got to turn her into a passer. You have to take away the high-low game. She's too dangerous in that set for Baylor. And here's how these two match up the size. A couple inches for Brown. One of just three players in college basketball to average 20 points and 10 rebounds per game. Gulich is right there where they're shooting it. 16 double-doubles on the season for Marie. Perhaps the advantage for Baylor is they have not one, but they have a second good player along the front line, and that's Lauren Cox, averaging 24 and 16 through the first couple of rounds of this tournament. Let's check in now with Allison Williams. Beth, you know these teams have worked all year for the opportunity to still be playing games, so don't think a couple of long flights are going to ground the excitement for Oregon State. They are racking up the wins and the miles. As a six seed, they had to travel to Lexington for the first two rounds. They took care of business there, but it was finals week, and Scott Ruick knows his team. He said they would be way too stressed out being on the road during finals, so they went back to Corvallis and then headed back east here to Lexington for the Sweet 16. But the coach said that they are having so much fun with it, and he said being home for a bit, being present for finals, outweighs any sort of negative aspect of all those extra flights. But they swapped out a two-and-a-half-hour drive for two cross-country flights. Nothing's going to put you in a better mood, Allison, than being on spring break. And that's what Oregon State is looking <laughs> at right now with those exams in the rearview mirror. They are in their road black jerseys, the home whites for Baylor. The winner moves on to the Elite Eight Sunday afternoon. And here is the new point guard for Baylor, Lex Morris, who has taken over for the injured Christy Wallace over the last five games. Oregon State starts in a man-to-man -man defense. They will like to run if they can rebound. And Baylor is one of the top rebounding teams in the nation. Off the miss, the rebound for Lauren Cox. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for the Lady Bears, the two seed in this region. Landrum and Cohen joining the other three. It's a pretty well-balanced attack for Baylor. They love to score, and they love to get up and down the floor. That's the tempo that they would prefer today. Baylor will also start in a man-to-man. -man. This is an Oregon State team that has to control the tempo with their offense. They have to make Baylor work. If they can get Gulich isolated here in a one-on-one, -on -one, they don't want to take advantage of it. You just saw the starting lineups as well for the Beavers. It's a team that will only go about seven deep. The other six besides Gulich, they can all chuck from downtown. This is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, and they can bring it from four of the five spots on the court. As a matter of fact, they're the second best three-point shooting team at 40%. And they like to run a lot of four out, one in. So you'll see a lot of space around Gulich, who's number 21 in black inside. And there is a look at the four out and one in, and a foul on the drive will send Cat Tudor to the line. Scott Ruick, third straight trip to the Sweet 16, really broke loose in 2016 with that trip to the Final Four. He is back at his alma mater now in his eighth season. And they've already put 
put together three conference championships in those eight years. What's impressive is Kat Tudor gets to the free throw line early now. This is a player that 67% of her shots are outside the arc, which means you've got to come with a long closeout and make her put it on the floor. For her to put it on the floor and get to the free throw line is a bonus for Oregon State. And that's been big for the Beavers through the first weekend of the tournament. They have made 23 more free throws than their opponents. They've been getting the line. There's Kim Mulkey. The head coach of the Baylor Lady Bears, the two-time national champs, they have owned the Big 12 Conference over the last decade or so. In fact, they are the winners of eight straight regular season titles. They followed that up with the tournament championship as well. And Baylor is switching one through five in their man-to-man -man defense. Let's see if Oregon State can exploit it. No reset on the shot clock off that miss. Here's Tudor again off the bounce. Gulich from the elbow. Offensive rebound pours down, and then it's stripped by Morris. And watch the speed of Morris in transition. Beth, when you look at Baylor, they have team speed at every position, except for this one right here on the interior. And that is a terrific job of Gulich getting back to contest Kalani Brown. Oregon State will run selectively. Morris almost got another pick. If there's one bugaboo, it's the turnover margin for Oregon State. It's negative five. And that's a problem because Baylor is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. They will generate extra possessions by crashing the glass. Their front line, including Cohen, averages almost 10 offensive rebounds a game. Lauren Cox turns in the lane, one and done on that trip. State wants to do is definitely make Brown run up and down the floor in the open three for Kat Tudor, the sophomore from Woodbridge, California. See, Beth, that's the one player you can't lose in transition. In transition defense, you've got to find her once she crosses midcourt. Cohen using the Brown screen, short on the shot. Baylor hitting just one of its first five attempts. Well, and that's the play that Cohen hit a shot on earlier. I think Scott Ruick plays the percentages, and so if that screen by Brown, he'll take that shot by Cohen instead of Brown taking shots. This is where you've got a driver right there. Gulich pulls up for 15, but you get Kalani Brown coming out to defend. You've got to make her move her feet. Really advantage for Oregon State. Four minutes into this first quarter. Cohen trying to weave through traffic, the spacing off right now for Baylor. Yeah, they, they are fine with Cohen trying to make plays. Look at Gulich stand up Brown, and she makes a contested jump shot. 6'7 junior from Slidell, Louisiana, the Big 12's player of the year. Look at that ball screening action on the elbow or below the free throw line. That is really tough to defend. Pick and roll is a big part of this offense, right, Debbie? Yes, it's a big part of what Scott Ruick likes to do in the shoot on the elbows. Horsdale just inside the line for two. Freshman. If Baylor is very slow in their cadence right now. They've got to pick up their energy a little bit on both ends of the floor. Now, Cohen's making plays for Baylor right now, and, and like I said before, on the scouting report, she would be the least option offensively for Baylor with this lineup. 6-2 senior out of Charleston, South Carolina. And Caleb Pivot, who has made the move over to the point guard spot this year, misses on that one. Well, we talked about the bigs to get it started, and Marie Gulich has delivered early at 6-5. She does a terrific job hitting up. Jump shot at the elbow. Let's go back to the Elite Eight 2016 in Dallas and the one seed Baylor shocked by the two seed Oregon State as the Beavers advance to the Final Four for the first time in school history. Sydney Weiss, Jamie Weisner, Gabby Hanson, Ruth Hamblin.
the biggest win in school history, as Scott Ruick reminded us of that when we talked to him about it the other day. And Kim Mulkey remembers it quite well as, uh, as well. Allison? Well, Beth, Scott Ruick said it was a pinnacle moment, and that win helped not just this program grow, but their confidence grow. In fact, he credits that win for giving them the belief necessary to beat Tennessee on Sunday. He said, if we don't have that win two years ago, how would we ever believe that we could do something in winning in Knoxville in the tournament against Tennessee that hasn't been done before? He said, we still believe and have not forgotten from that win. Three ball is good from Corsdale. Yeah, they, they beat Tennessee in Knoxville in that second round after the Lady Vols. They'd never lost at home before, Debbie, in the tournament, 57-0. And, and Oregon State went in there and clipped them. Well, they took care of the basketball, especially late in the game when Tennessee went into some pressure. And Kalani Brown off the timeout. Kim Mulkey getting Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown going on the inside. Remember, in the break, I said, this game needed a little bit of a jump start. And I think we're starting to see both teams pick up their energy level. Terrific footwork on the inside by 6'7 junior Kalani Brown. First foul on Marie Gulich. Brown, a 75% free throw shooter, knocks it down. Best field goal percentage in Baylor history. She's already top 10 in blocks and double doubles. She did not fare well in that Elite Eight matchup from a couple years ago. And wants to make amends as Gulich gets around her for two. Gulich going around exactly, not trying to go over the top. And Kalani Brown is not a shot blocker. Doesn't want to get in foul trouble. Lauren Cox is a better shot blocker. Terrific backdoor cut by Cohen and the find from Lauren Cox. I think Lauren Cox is a terrific facilitator of their offense. She's a very good passer. She plays with high IQ for a post player. coming way out on Gulich. And we look at the post up, steps away, and gets the roll. I'm not sure Kalani Brown can guard her one-on-one. -on -one. Gulich has got some quickness, and she's got some face-up ability, as we just saw. She's had a couple of baskets facing up. The other question is, can Gulich check Brown at the other end as Baylor turns it over? Well, the NIT heads to New York for its Final Four with semifinal action tipping off Tuesday at 7 Eastern. It's Western Kentucky and Utah on ESPN as well as your ESPN app. Don't forget to visit NCAA.com. It's the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Brown will check out, so it's a smaller, faster lineup now for Baylor as Dee Dee Richards, the 6'1 freshman from Cypress, Texas, checks in. This is an indicator that they're picking up their pressure. Look for a backdoor opportunity for Oregon State. Off the bounce, McWilliams, no. Offensive rebound for Gulich and a second chance. The kick out and the quick trigger from Tudor. Another oh board. This time it's Pivik. Well, Pivik's the best rebounding guard in the Pac-12 this year. As your point guard gets seven boards a game, most of those are on the defensive end. 5'10 sophomore, Linwood, Washington. Here she goes off the bounce, fouled by Cox. No help side on the drive. Not good awareness. Weak side defense. But that's because they're such a good three-point shooting team. So you can't help with two feet in the paint. You might have one foot in the paint, and you got to make sure you can recover. Kayla, 75% on the season. Right now, this is Oregon State's tempo. They're scoring, they're able to organize their defense. Baylor can't get anything easy. They've not had any transition opportunities. Well, Richards, who had just checked in, immediately goes back out. Kim Bunky didn't like the way that she was defending on that, so here's Brown back on the court. Bothered on the shot by Gulich. And usually Brown makes about 80% of the shots that she takes on the left side of the floor. She goes over that right shoulder with her left hand. Pass deflected. Here comes Juicy Landrum off to Morris. Missed the layup. 
And that was what you would call an easy bucket that they didn't convert on. Nice ball fake by Corsdale, but then missed the shot. Nice roll to the bucket and replace up high. That action's going to be open against Baylor's defense. Brown really burying the defender down low, but it's another missed layup for the Lady Bears. And now numbers on the push. Pivik, wide open, look for Tudor. Baylor fortunate she didn't hit that one. Brown in the trail. Settled for the jumper. She does have range from there, but that might have been too quick. Tudor on the drive, and here comes Morris the other way. Off the crossover to the right side. Lex Morris for two. One shot here for Oregon State. Last possession. We're gonna let Katie McWilliams run it, the 6'2 senior right here. We're going to their horn set, which is two post players on the elbow, shooters in the corner. Gulich rattles it in, out, and then back down. Oregon State, 20 to 15 over Baylor through the first here in the Sweet 16. We'll chat with Scott Ruick when we come back. Welcome back to the Sweet 16 matchup here in Lexington, Oregon State with a five-point lead and joined by their head coach, Scott Ruick. Coach Ruick, so many eyes on the battle of the bigs between Kalani Brown and Marie Gulich. How would you assess that through the first quarter? Well, it's a battle for sure. I think both are trying to get established. Uh, we've, we've each been able to get the ball inside, and we've both hurt each other a little bit with it. And so it'll be interesting to see how each team adjusts, you know, going forward. And so I really like our ball movement right now. Offensively for your team and for Baylor, some shots missed that you would normally make. Do things feel like they maybe just need to settle in a little bit? Yeah, I think I think I think we did. You know, as, as that that quarter went on, we thought we moved the ball well. We missed shots early, um, but then it was nice to see some go down. And I think both teams will get more and more comfortable. Scott, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Allison. Uh, we've talked about the matchup. Gulich and Brown, Marie with eight points, Kalani with five. A lot of minutes, Debbie. In fact, for both teams combined, just two minutes off of their benches. It's okay because the pace, you know, it's not a walk the ball up the floor, but because Oregon State has been able to score, they can force Baylor to take it out of the net. They can organize their defense. And Gulich is not scoring with her back to the basket. She's hitting face-up shots, elbow jumpers. She's pulling Kalani Brown away from the bucket. That's a tough challenge for Kalani to face up and go to guard somebody up there. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 continuing tonight on TBS and CBS. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. Underway in the Women's Sweet 16. Four games tonight, four games for you all day tomorrow. Another turnover. Morris, she double dribbled. Off for the double dribble. But the basketball body language for Kim Mulkey's team has changed off the timeout. That was a much better effort defensively. It didn't result in the score as Morris turns it over. However, that's the pace that Kim Mulkey's team likes to play at on the defensive end. Bears coming in as the second highest scoring team in the country at 86 points per game. Gulich. Called on the rebound. Forsdale tried to go over the back. See, Scott Ruick is going to empty the playbook right now on isolation plays for Gulich. They can run offense, they can go side to side, they can reverse the basketball, but ultimately, inside 10, the ball's going to be in her hands looking to score against Kalani Brown. 6'5 senior from Germany, third team All American, the co Pac 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Up opposite Kalani Brown tonight. Cox spins away and hits. Kim Mulkey does a terrific job as well as isolating her post players. You can see we talked about the bigs having an impact early and both sides establishing their baseline.
see that roll and replace on the weak side. So you roll the post, and then you lift the weak side. They get a lot of that action, Oregon State. Coolidge this time with Cox defending. Good help defense by Baylor. That's really good scouting report, D. There's that high low that's so dangerous for Baylor. Brown can't knock that down. One and done on that trip. Getting plenty of looks in the lane. Goodman for three. Round and down. He's the backup point guard to Michaela Pivik. And she comes in with a scorer's mentality. Third triple of this first half for Oregon State. Brown, 15-footer, got it. And Kalani Brown is very capable. Watching the last game where Kalani Brown hit three face-up jump shots against Michigan. Rolled over Grambling and Michigan. Scored over 90 in the first round. Scored 80 in the second round win. Gulich spinning away from Brown and knocking it down. That's beautiful. That is an incredible fadeaway. A little sycamore move, if you will. A little Jack Sigma? Yeah, a little Jack Sigma. I see, I see how you went Pacific Northwest there. <laughs> and now Gulich with the takeaway. Or you could go Dirk Nowitzki. There you go. You could do that. Well, that'd, be more, crowd, yeah. that'd be more appropriate for it's her. It's a generational right? thing. The German thing. Yeah. yeah. in their horn set. Got a foul on Cohen for holding the cutter. Gulich has been so effective that they've had to bring some help. So they're really concentrated on her on the defensive end has Baylor. And she gets a deflection here and a turnover and Oregon State's running the other way. So she has been very impressive early on. 10 points, three rebounds so far for Marie. And she's capable of playing 40 minutes if she has to. And now the offensive foul on the screen up top. That'll be on Horsdale. And that'll be her first. Foul. This one's going to go on Lauren Cox. And that is two now on Lauren Cox. That's three consecutive calls away from the ball. Yep. Cox is still out there with a couple of fouls. Well, you got to go right at yep. Cox. There's that pick and roll action right into Lauren Cox, and she gets the block. Richards on the run, slicing into the lane. Finally, a transition opportunity for Baylor off their defense. Lauren Cox is their best shot blocker, blocks the ball into their transition game. More of the high pick and roll action. Goodman with the handle and the swipe by Cox. Lauren Cox running the break, looking to go coast to coast and gets fouled on the shot. How about Lauren Cox, back-to-back -back defensive plays for the defensive player of the year in the Big 12. She averages 2.6 points. We've just seen her get a couple here in the last two possessions. And then the handle at 6-4. I love it with her offhand. Going the length of the court. A lot of good things right there. Most important was to start keeping the block in play and basically just tipping it to herself that an outlet pass on the block. All three of these big girls, pretty adept at doing that. Well, Kim Mulkey's team, when they switch, they switch to steal. In that situation, she switched to get that deflection and it's a block going the other way. Lauren now with six points and it's a two point game and now she will leave with those two fouls. So it's uh, no more, as, uh, as Nell Fortner likes to call them, the twin powers. They'll go with their smaller lineup here. Really good job defensively. Look at the ball pressure. Everybody denying one pass away. Four on the perimeter right now for the Beavers. Shot clock under 10. 
Smith, the kick out and an open look for a three and another offensive foul. That's on Pivik. And that's her second. So do you help off a ball side corner? No, not unless you're gonna draw a charge like Dee Dee Richards, because you leave a wide open three point shooter. That's a terrific defensive play by Dee Dee Richards. So now here we are in the Sweet 16, Debbie, and both sides will run a rookie at the point. Pivik has to sit. So now it's Goodman on one side and Morris on the other. Natalie Cho getting some run here as well. And she's a pretty good three-point shooter. Number 24 in white. Brown able to tip it back out to a teammate. Oh, I thought Morris got fouled on that. She rejects the screen. No whistle, and here comes Goodman. Time Oregon State Player of the Year now in at the point with just under five to go in the first half. Oh my goodness, another offensive foul called off the ball. A two point game here in the Sweet 16. Sweet 16 in historic Rupp Arena in Lexington. Who's going to be moving on? Marie Gulich and the Beavers of Oregon State. Or will it be Kalani Brown and the Lady Bears of Baylor? Reminder coming up on the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. We'll be breaking down what's going on here right now. The leading rebounding team in the country is being outboarded. In fact, just one O-board for Baylor in this first half. They'll also get you caught up. Mississippi State and NC State are already at the half, as well as a preview of the games coming up in uh, the second window tonight, including the matchup here, Stanford and Louisville. And we are all tied up, Debbie, at 25. 21 of Baylor's 25 points have come from their front line. Allison? Well, guys, Scott Rook feels like right now any of the struggles Oregon State is having are self-inflicted. He said, we are beating ourselves. They are doing nothing to make us play like this right now. Yeah, they have maintained the advantage throughout Baylor, led very briefly early on in the first quarter, and now they have gone back on top. Kalani Brown, an 8-0 run. And Joanna Grimmick comes in the the game at 6'8". She's a junior. She's number 11 in black. She's got a lot of size. See if she can bother Kalani Brown. It didn't seem to bother her the last time down the floor. Should have been a walk. Instead, it's a turnover. Morris checks her surroundings, steps through to the left hand, and then it's tipped by Richards to keep it alive. There's Grimmick with a block shot. So interestingly enough, Debbie, that right now it's Oregon State with the two bigs as Lauren Cox is sitting for Baylor. And I'm not sure we'll see Lauren Cox the rest of this half with three minutes to play because of those two personal fouls. And off the bounce on the drive, Goodman had it stripped. And I really like the defensive effort Baylor has started to bring now. You can see their energy picking up. They're getting a little more aggressive at defending the ball. Of course, when you've got Kalani Brown on the backside of pressure, you, you know you've got somebody back there that can alter shots, if not block them. Kalani with 11 points so far to lead all scores. Gulich with 10 for Oregon State. And there's number 10, Katie McWilliams, with the bucket to tie it up. That's her first basket for Oregon State after going 0 for 3 to start the game. Good out of bounds play. Brown, boy, she continues to hit from 15 to 18 feet out. She is very comfortable. What a soft touch. Six for 11, now 13 points. It's, it's really challenging to have to defend. You gotta make her put it on the floor. Make her turn her into a passer. Another takeaway for Baylor. Six the speed of the half, and Morris steps on the gas. Foul on the 
this shot. Kalani Brown has hit a couple of jumpers from the top of the floor in their transition game. So Gulich with a long closeout. And look at Kalani, looks over the bench and goes, look, I'm wide open, coach. I'm going to keep taking it. You should. Officials checking something over at the scorer's table. And while we were looking at that replay, the officials are going to send the players to the bench. Kim Mulkey had a little conversation with uh, Alexis Morris, her point guard, who's missed a couple of layups. And then comes down and commits a foul. So you don't want to compound one mistake with another. There was some contact on the rebound at the other end of the floor involving uh, an arm of one of the Oregon State players, and I believe the face of Dee Dee Richards. So I think they're going to take a look at that. Oh, no, this is at this end. not appear to be anything there. Yeah, there, Jenna Cross, the official, came across over the floor, across the floor, and said they were just looking for something unsportsmanlike. And I think it's just a common foul. I don't think there's anything yeah. extra on that foul. But because it involves some contact on the head, we'll take a look at it. 29-27, the two-seed Baylor with the lead over the six-seed Oregon State, the winner moving on to the Elite Eight. So that's gonna be a foul on Lex Morris on the head of uh, Washington. That's our next game coming up. There's uh, Louisville head coach Jeff Walls and one of his daughters. That would be Lucy. Yeah getting set to take on the uh, Stanford Cardinal. I'm surprised this is taking this long. It certainly didn't appear that there was anything there. Well, DV Sports, it depends on how many angles they have in there and how many angles they fed into. Cameras uh, angles have been fed into the replay machine. Kyle Bacon and uh, Beverly Roberts looking at it. All right, what you got, Debbie? Just a basketball play, what we thought it was. Nothing extra. So a couple of free throws coming up for Madison Washington. She's just seven of 12 for the season. Low scoring game, which for Baylor at 87 points per game. Oregon State has controlled the tempo because they've been able to make baskets. They've been able to get organized on the defensive end. And Baylor's missed, I'd say probably three Fast break layups off their defense that they haven't been able to convert on. Washington, our fourth tie now of the game and 29 all as Madison hits that second free throw. And Baylor's not a team that shoots the three very much, so you don't have to overextend your defense. A lot off the bounce and a lot with those two bigs. Another missed shot in the paint. Well, anytime Kalani Brown doesn't take a shot, that's a good thing for Oregon State's defense. One of the things that Scott Rook has always prided himself on at Oregon State, playing hard at that defensive end. Well, he does a terrific job with his scout. They play personnel very well. And Baylor's a team that only makes four threes a game. And look at that isolation. They clear out the weak side and they let Kalani Brown go one on one. And one opportunity on the second chance for Richards. That's what Dee Dee Richards is good at for Baylor. That's the value she brings 
to their offense. She can crash the glass, and when you take shots in your offense that you're supposed to take, and you know Kalani Brown is going to shoot that, you can go to the boards hard. And crashing from the perimeter is really tough to check out. Richards, not a good free throw shooter. Just a shade over 50%, and she misses there. A two-point Baylor lead approaching the final minute of this first half. McWilliams, short on that three ball. So look at Gulick just to come out a little bit higher on Kalani Brown now, and that gives some space inside. Now where that's gonna be a factor, Beth, is in the second half when Lauren Cox comes back in the game because Kalani Brown has just opened up the interior because she's been able to knock down some perimeter shots. Goodman settling for the three there. Shot clock is now off. Look for them to clear out the weak side again for Kalani Brown to get the isolation inside. Screen right back to Dakia Cohen, 17 footer. No, good box out for Goodman. The launch good if it goes. Baylor does not get a touch there for Brown. They will, however, take the lead into the locker room. 31 to 29, Kalani Brown, 13 points and seven rebounds. And now with our Allison Williams. Thank you very much, Beth Kalani. What helped to facilitate the run that put you guys back on top? Uh, I think we talked more on execute, talked more on defense and executed our offense. Um, we just got to do more of that. We saw you hit a couple jumpers. How has that opened things up? Um, it does because it brings them up. So it opens the paint up for the kid to post and Lauren to post. So I'm just keep doing that. After you hit one of those, we saw the look that you gave Coach Mulkey. What were you telling her there? I was telling her, it's working. I'm just keep shooting. She was like, keep doing it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Good stuff, Kalani. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Allison. A two-point lead for the Baylor Lady Bears up against Oregon State and fighting for a spot in the Elite Eight. Kalani Brown getting the job done in that first half. And we will get you to the studio with Maria, Andy, and Nell after a short break. We welcome you back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Kim Mulkey fired up in that first half. Baylor, the two seed with a two point lead over Oregon State. As we get set to, set to start the third quarter, the winner moves on to the Elite Eight and a shot at the Final Four in Columbus. The winner of this one will face the winner of our second matchup here at Rupp Arena. That would be the top seed in the region, the Louisville Cardinals, and the four seed, Stanford Cardinal. As we welcome you back to Lexington, Beth Mowens alongside Debbie Antonelli, Kalani Brown getting it done in that first half for the Baylor Lady, Lady Bears as we take a look at our uh, Google Cloud highlights, Debbie. Beth, we know she can score with her back to the basket. But what was impressive was her ability to knock down shots in their high-low game in their transition. She hit some quick hitters from the top of the floor, and that's going to open up the paint in the interior. Without hesitation, she has a terrific shot from up there and she takes advantage of it three baskets with her back to the basket three baskets facing up in the first half brown had more uh, floor to work with because lauren cox had some foul problems lauren played 14 minutes had six points blocked four shots but the pace certainly was to oregon state's favor they were without their point guard, Michaela Pivik, for nine minutes in that first half, and now Michaela's back out there as well. Let's check in now with Allison Williams. Hey, Beth, spoke with Marie Gulich as she came out of the half, and she said the message in the locker room was about playing their game. She said, we're defeating ourselves with unnecessary mistakes and fouls, had too many turnovers at nine in that first half. She said, we have to get back to playing the way we're capable of. As far as defensively on Kalani Brown, after Brown made a couple of those jumpers, she said she showed she's comfortable there. I have to get out on her. We have to make sure we're switching up how we play her defensively and make her think. 
Yeah, they were fortunate, Allison, that those nine turnovers only led to four points off of turnovers. And Debbie, another good sign for Oregon State, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. They were subpar from downtown in that first half. They only made three in the first half. They average eight a game, so expect if the numbers play out that they're going to hit five threes in this half. So can you counter with enough twos? Cat Tudor's already got one. Kalani Brown loves to go to that left hand and knocks that one down. Went through Gulich to score it. How about the skill set of Kalani Brown, her ability on the block and her ability to hit some face-up shots. Gulich stepping away. Gets she, the nice roll. She really cooled off in the second quarter. She's going to have to be able to score some points on the inside for them. And, Kim Mulkey's going to continue to just throw it inside to Kalani Brown. That pass deflected, and the takeaway. Tried to force it into Kalani that time. And this is where Scott Ruer can notice there's a matchup issue, because Kalani Brown now is guarding on the perimeter. See, now that Baylor's going to get the switch back. Good communication by the bigs of Baylor. McWilliams, the drive, the kick, and an offensive foul. The charge called on Oregon State. That's the second time on a drive that Baylor has helped and left the ball side corner open and has gotten a charge. Watch Kalani Brown go to work inside. Almost thought this was traveling. Gulich tries to draw a charge. Brown just so good over that right shoulder. Brown. Frank Richards' weak side. Kind of bounce there. What a nice, nice pass, Beth. Kalani Brown find an open jump shooter. This is when things could get fun, too, because now the coaches have their offenses in front of them for the second half, and they are both masters at sort of running the show, conducting for their offenses. And there's another triple for Cat Tudor. She comes through the elevator door screen at the top of the floor and knocks it down. On three different occasions this year, Cat knocked down seven triples. She had five of them in the first round win over Western Kentucky, and here's Tudor with a board. Again, it's just Gulich in the interior for Oregon State, and then the shooters lining up on the perimeter. Here they bring help off the bounce. A terrific job of communicating. We're talking about the elevator door screen, getting Cap Tudor open. Watch the screen right here. She's going to come right through the middle, and she's going to knock down this three-point shot. This is a terrific job by Oregon State to execute, and Tudor knocks down her second triple of the game, of the half. Pivik, the pitch, stepping just inside the line is course down. Pivik, boy, she won't get an easier put back than that one. Highest ranked recruit in Oregon State history. That will be supplanted next year when 6'9 Andrea Aquino shows up. How impressive are the bigs from the top of the floor today? Terrific by Brown and Cox. They've combined for 25 already. Gulich with a lane inside. Missed it. Richards to Cohen and a good fast break for Baylor. The three-point shooting of Oregon State in the second half has neutralized a little bit of the athleticism and the team speed of Baylor. Another three-pointer for Oregon State. That's Corsdale. Help off the ball side corner. Okay, so that's why you usually don't help, because you leave a three-point shooter over there. But the last couple of times, Baylor's been able to draw a charge on that. Beavers go back on top. Brown, Richards slashing to the lane, and a blocking foul called underneath. And that's going to be on Michaela Pivik, and that will be her third. 
Kalani Brown unselfishly throwing it to Dee Dee Richards on a basket cut. But you know what, Scott Ruick, this is a, a chance you got to trust Pivot. You know, you have to have your best five on the yep. floor right now. Only because you sense that Baylor's making a run. Brown goes right at Gulich and draws the foul. And that'll be the second on Marie. Kalani Brown to the free throw line. Well, here's what I love about Kalani's Brown, Kalani Brown's game right now. Is she's knocking down high post shots. She's made a couple of passes out of the post. When she gets an opportunity that she likes, she takes it off the bounce. She is really doing a terrific job of reading the Oregon State defense. Baylor Lady Bears, winners of 30 in a row, just one loss on the season. That was back in mid-November to UCLA when they did not have Lauren Cox and they did not have Kim Mulkey on the bench. That's their only blemish on the record. You could have made a really strong argument, which I did for most of the year, for them to be a one seed. And then Christy Wallace got hurt. ACL, she's over in Australia right now, had surgery, and she's rehabbing, getting ready to rehab. Gulich with the rebound and a foul. One point Baylor lead midway through the third. One of the things that Oregon State is really good at is assisted baskets. The screen assist, that's what we're tracking. It's when you make a pass, a player coming off the screen scores. Twice we've seen Cat Tudor hit threes off the elevator door screens. The pass leads to the shot. They make the basket, working off the screening action. 68% of the baskets that Oregon State scores are assisted on the season. That is sixth in the nation. That is a very high number. And all those screen assists we just saw, Debbie led to three pointers. They were three for 10 in the first half, three for four here in the third. And a foul called on the shot. And that is Dakia Cohen's third personal foul. Gulich to the line here. Really good job by Scott Ruick's club off the timeout, which we call ATOs, after timeouts, to get Gulich a touch, a quality touch at the rim. Marie can't knock it down, playing in the 138th game of her career from Germany. When we talked to her the other day, she said, I, I came here for the culture. I didn't really look around at too many other places. I didn't know a whole lot about the college basketball landscape in the United States. And I immediately felt at home at Oregon State and in Scott Ruick's system. And uh, what a marriage it's been for the last four years for her in this program. Our colleague at ESPNW, Graham Hayes, wrote a terrific yes. piece on Marie about coming over here. Didn't play with her back to the basket, didn't understand how to play defense, and what a complete player she's become. She's going to be a pro. Has developed into a terrific leader, which isn't always easy for the foreign-born players when they come over here. There's so much energy and effort into assimilating into the United States, and Gulich has handled it all with aplomb and is looking to make a big difference on the floor tonight. And there she is with the turnaround in the lane. So the last two possessions, Scott Ruick is getting the ball back to Gulich in the paint where she can go to work. Terrific up screen by Michaela Pivik to open her up. That would be a screen assist. Morris looking for the deep three, gets the nice hop. Lex Morris, the freshman from Beaumont, Texas. Her mentor, the injured Christy Wallace, told him, keep that poker face. Don't let him show, see your emotions when you're out there playing. She has definitely picked up the pace of this team running the point. Cox, short on that shot. Allison? Well, Kim Mulkey was really frustrated with Kalani Brown's defense. That's why you're seeing Cox on Gulich now. She said, Cox is having to help so much. I can't have you playing like that. We don't want to be helping on her, but we have to have you step up defensively. So they made the switch. 
which means Kalani Brown's going to be on the perimeter trying to guard a three-point shooter in that four-out, one-in offense in front of Scott Ruick's bench. I'm waiting for him to take advantage of that. <laughs> they are two true tacticians on these benches in Mulkey and Ruick. 2-3 zone, packing it in. As we mentioned, Baylor has not made a three. Richards gets fouled on the drive. That's going to be the third foul on Marie Gulich. And a reminder, Sports Center tonight after the Stanford Louisville game, they'll break down all the Sweet 16. Big injury in Major League Baseball today, as well as Josh Allen's Pro Day up at Wyoming at Sports Center at 11:30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So now two. Beavers starters are in foul trouble as Louisville head coach Jeff Walls looks on. Both Pivik and Gulich will stay on the floor with three fouls. Well, as long as they're going to stay on the floor, Scott Rue can play in that 2-3 zone. And they got to pack it in. They're giving up dribble penetration to the paint. If you're going to play that 2-3 zone, you got to do a better job of gapping it. Make Baylor hit some perimeter shots. All right, let's see where it, look at, here it is. Brown pulled way out defensively on Corsdale. And a three-second violation called on the Beavers. It's their 11th turnover, which is not good for Scott Ruick's club, but at least they're dead ball turnovers, so Baylor can't run off it. Choate, the nice entry pass to Brown. Tipped out of bounds by Baylor. See, right there, Kalani Brown has got to have enough confidence to finish with her right hand. She caught it with two feet in the paint on the right side of the floor for 6-7. That's a right-handed finish. McWilliams. Gulich gets ISOed on Cox. Look at the dig down help from the Baylor defenders. They've been bringing help when the ball goes to the floor. They don't bring any help until Gulich puts it down on the deck. See, watch the pivot here then. See, they, they reach inside because they can help off at that point. Gulich is not a passer when she turns her back like that. Pivik gets the shot up and over the defensive player of the year in the Big 12, and it's tied again with a minute and a half to go here in the third. I still contend this is Oregon State's tempo. Absolutely. And it's a Baylor team, Debbie, that has not had a lot of close games this year. They plowed through the Big 12, through the Big 12 tournament. They wiped out their first two opponents in the NCAA tournament. And how will they handle close quarters in the fourth quarter? Gulich, just enough of a window to hit it. Well, that's where you get concerned about not having Christy Wallace, the senior point guard and having a freshman in, Alexis Morris, who's got the ball in her hands right now for Kim Mulkey. Mulkey coaching her up, calling it out, said, I gotta play it every play with my freshman point guard. Of course, Mulkey, a former Olympic point guard herself for the United States, and a national champion from her playing days at Louisiana Tech. Beeves will hold for one. You haven't seen this set out of Scott Rourke. He's going to a new wrinkle here with the last possession. McWilliams, good decision maker. Shot clock winding down. Oh, they're going to have to chuck, and Cox was right there ready for it. I think they're going to put some time back on the clock here because of a shot clock violation. The shot clock ran out with time left. And then Gulich traveled because she thought it was the end of the quarter. So Baylor's going to get the ball back instead of Oregon State. They had a chance to have another shot. Yes. Actually, it was a shot clock violation. It's going to be uh, Baylor's ball anyway. There's no traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The official signal travel. Looks like there's going to be a couple of seconds left, though, I thought, with the shot clock violation. 
Because you were you were right though, Debbie. It looked like initially the officials were calling it a travel, and then they realized no, we got to go back further than that. We should be able to see the clocks here on this uh, on this next replay. Look at this defensive play by Lauren Cox. Watch how she jumps out to help on that screen on that hedge and she gets a piece of it so therefore shot clock violation with two seconds on the clock looks to me like there's going to be over two seconds i think 2.1 yeah, so. well who can throw the baseball pass for baylor yeah. that's what i want to know because that's who you put on the baseline yeah. throw the baseball pass three quarters or half court and you get two dribbles if there's two seconds, can advance here. They don't have the javelin thrower. Michaela yeah. Pivik is the javelin thrower for Oregon State, so she would right. she would be ideally the one, but she's in the wrong color jersey yeah. here. And because. There's a stoppage of play to take a monitor review. There cannot be a substitution here. I think Scott Rubick was trying to get Gulich off the floor because she's got three fouls, but that's not going to happen. You can't substitute. They are going to have Dakia Cohen inbounded. What's interesting is that play is designed. She's a right-handed shooter coming off that screen. I think she'd want to be coming the other way. Oh, they're going to call it the quarter. Kim Monkey's got might have something to argue about here. She wanted two seconds on the clock. We'll hear from Coach Mulkey when we come back as we get set for the fourth quarter for a spot in the Elite Eight. Welcome back to Lexington, a two-point game going into the fourth quarter between Oregon State and Baylor in the Sweet 16 matchup here with Baylor head coach Kim Mulkey. Coach Mulkey, what was the explanation you got for the end of the third quarter? <laughs> he said the table stopped the clock. What was your reaction to that? The referees win this game. <laughs> Defensively, what is the plan on Gulich in the fourth quarter? What do you well, we're trying both Cox and Brown on her. The kid is just shooting lights out. And hey, hats off to her. Uh, that's what seniors are supposed to do for their team. And uh, we don't seem to have the answer, but it's still a ball game. We're still hanging in there. Good, thank you. You bet. Thank you very much, Allison. So here is the end of that third quarter again, and what appeared to it should have been a shot clock violation with two seconds left for Baylor. I think it's a shot clock violation. Now the official Jenna Cross, who's been terrific communicating with us, came yep. over and said the table stopped the clock, and they're not supposed to. It's supposed to go off their precision timing. However, they go to the monitor, they can correct that. It's a correctable error. It's a timing issue. So I'm confused because to me there were two seconds left and I think Baylor could have had a chance for a last possession. The numbers for Marie Gulich, 17 points, six rebounds to lead the way for Oregon State. Kalani Brown with 17 and eight rebounds to lead the way for Baylor. So now the shot clock did not start on the inbounds. One quarter to go for a berth in the Elite Eight. Winner of this one will face either Louisville or Stanford. That matchup is coming up next here in Lexington. Good flare screen by Gulich. Good repost on the inside. Shot clock winding down. Pivik will pull up over Cox. That won't go. Good hustle by Dakia Cohen. Kalani Brown spinning to the right this time, but still using the left hand. Not as effective. Good job by Gulich not to let her catch it that deep in the post. Tudor on the drive and wards off the defender to get the lay-in. How about Kat Tudor? 
she scored the first basket of the game going off the bounds. This is a Oregon State team that doesn't get to the free throw line very much. That was a good aggressive take. Lauren Cox able to tip it to herself, but then missed the bunny. And a whistle and a foul. Well, Madison Square Garden is hosting the NIT's Final Four on the men's side with the second semifinal Tuesday night at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. That'll be Mississippi State and Penn State. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Big news here for the Beavers. A fourth personal foul on Michaela Pivik. And now Scott Ruick will have to go to his freshman backup point guard, Aaliyah Goodman. That would make me a little nervous in terms of ball handling because Baylor here with this free throw. Okay, it's still a three-point game. You know Baylor's gonna pick up their pressure defensively. This is where you look for a backdoor opportunity. And Morris getting right up on Goodman out top. This is the other ball handler right here, Katie McWilliams, who has some experience at the point as well. Gulich trying to get her out. Cox and one. Terrific poise, composure, and getting the ball where you want it on the block. Look at Gulich, room to attack the shot blocker. Two bounces off the glass, draws the foul on Lauren Cox. That's the third now on Cox. As Gulich goes for her 20th point of the night and gets it. This is the 12th time this season she's gone over the 20 point mark. And a little 2-2-1, two, two, three quarter court pressure to take some time off the clock and off the possession. The skip to Natalie Cho. Baylor's hit 1-3, and that was Alexis Morris. They gotta get it done with their defense right here. Oregon State continues to do the job on the boards. They are out-rebounding, the top rebounding team in the country. In fact, Baylor has out-rebounded every opponent this season. But the Beavers are plus eight on the glass, and there have not been a whole lot of second chances inside. Baylor has missed 28 shots. They've only offensive rebounded six. This is the top offensive rebounding team by percentage in the country. Foul on the shot, and it's back to the free throw line for Oregon State. That's on Cho, her first. How much longer can Kim Mulkey keep Talani Brown on the bench? because on that left block, she's almost unstoppable. And we have not seen her hit a face-up jump shot in this second half. Whereas in the first half, Kalani Brown hit three buckets on, from the top of the floor. It is not a foul problem, by the way, with Kalani Brown. She only got the one as Mulkey turns and talks to her right here. Could be a fatigue issue, trying to save her till the end, but... But she talked to us the other day, too. Remember about how is she handling the defense on Gulich, who's having a big night? Look at the 2-3 defense. Cox gets into the lane, and a quick timeout for Baylor. They pulled within six, seven and a half to go in the Sweet 16 in Lexington. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. And it's the play of Marie Gulich, Debbie. Oh, she's been fantastic. She has been the go-to on the interior all game, scoring over her left or her right shoulder. They've done a fantastic job isolating her in their four-out one in. And the last move, she gets a 10 from the bench. <laughs> That's a first. I've never seen that before. <laughs> the 6'5 German, Marie Gulich. Trying to get Oregon State back to the Elite Eight. And we touched on it earlier when they beat Baylor in 2016 to advance to the program's first Final Four. They talked about that, the biggest win in program history. Four Pac-12 teams are in this Sweet 16. Two of them are here. And trying to push each other through to the 
Elite Eight. Brown will stay on the bench, Debbie. Yeah, because this is a defensive lineup, Beth. They've got to get some pressure, and they go with a full court man. That's why Kim Mulkey called the timeout. Picking up the pressure. Timeout on a defense. Get the defense set up. Interesting. Scott Ruick looking to continue to play the hot hand and Marie Gulich, he told his team to make sure they give her space and then he told her just go for it. Don't overthink this, just attack. Boy, even off the miss right there for Gulich. Aggressive to get to the loose ball. Scott Ruick knows it's a challenge for anybody on any night to have to deal with 6'5". Marie Gulich on the interior. She shoots 66% from the floor. She's been terrific. And Kalani Brown comes in for this possession right here, which I think is yep. to get a stop but for, a deep, for an offensive possession. Look for her to get the ball next time down the floor. A handful right now for Baylor dealing with Marie Gulich. Cohen jumping into the passing lane to get the steal, and the foul will be called on McWilliams. That's what Zakia Cohen is supposed to be doing. She can add value to Kim Mulkey's lineup on the defensive end. She doesn't need the basketball to be effective to help Baylor win. Staying in that 2-3 zone. Looking for a three. Second chance here. They are just one of nine from outside the arc tonight. And the pass picked off. And it's Gulich again. The transition defense by Baylor to get on the three-point shooters quickly. Gulich set a big screen there on Morris. Goodman trying to hold down the fort at the point and gets the assist to Tudor. Nine point Oregon State lead. Four triples for Cat Tudor. Go ahead and shoot till your arm falls off. Biggest lead of the night for the Beavers. Cox, the wraparound pass to Kalani. Beautiful interior passing. Remember in the beginning of the half. We talked about the percentages of Oregon State's three-point shooting, and could Baylor make enough twos? Oregon State, seven triples. That's a third of their buckets. And there's the switch. Two-man game. You've got to throw it in there to Gulich. They do not. And it's Baylor the other way. Juicy Landrum. with a touch and a shot, rattles it home. A quiet confidence about Lauren Cox. 15 points now for Lauren, and it's a five-point game. Approaching five minutes to play. Gulich, 17, footer, knocks it down. I love the shot-making ability of both teams right now. No game slippage in either team's execution late with a chance to advance in the tournament. Foul on the drive. This is fantastic. This is the offense picking up. It's going to be about who can make the last plays. Both teams have had the hot hand from the outside. For Oregon State, it's Cat Tudor. It's Marie Gulich facing up. On the other side, Baylor starting to make a run. Oh, we got a couple of national championship head coaches in Lexington for the Sweet 16. With Tara Vanderveer and Kim Mulkey, the Louisville Cardinals are the one seed here, and they are on deck against Stanford. Also coming up tonight, Texas and UCLA, and what could be a huge night for the Pac-12, as right now, Oregon State has the lead over the two-seed Baylor Lady Bears down the stretch, and too many chances for Baylor right there. Can the Oregon State offense and ball handling hold up against the Baylor pressure? And we'd like to welcome all of you who've been watching Mississippi State beat NC State to advance to the Elite Eight.
for the second year in a row. Beth Moens, Debbie Antonelli, Allison Williams with you here at Rupp Arena. And Oregon State working on an upset right now of the two seed Baylor. It's been a big night for Marie Gulich, the 6'5 senior inside for Oregon State. 22 points, eight rebounds. And Marie hits on the first free throw. And Marie Gulich has been terrific in Oregon's four out, one in offense. They have isolated her. Baylor has not brought any help. She's been able to score one on one against the Baylor Bigs. And she just drew the fourth personal foul on Lauren Cox. Michaela Pivik is back on the floor here for Oregon State to run the point. And on the weak side of the rebound, Baylor will keep it. On the other side, Baylor and Kalani Brown has been terrific, but has missed some easy buckets late. The 2-3 zone has packed it in. And Baylor has only hit one triple in the game. Here's what's on the line for Baylor. Four straight trips to the Elite Eight. Denied each time, trying to get back to the Final Four. Of course, Kim Mulkey and Baylor, winners of two national championships, but the frustration, including at the hands of Oregon State, trying to fight their way back to the Elite Eight. But it's been the Beavers with the lead throughout, and what a job that Scott Ruick has done in Corvallis over the course of the last four years, not only a trip to the Final Four, but they have joined the elite, Debbie, in terms of wins. Baylor, Notre Dame, UConn, Maryland, and South Carolina, the only programs with more wins than the Beavers. As the officials continue to check the monitor to see if it hit the rim for a reset. They're looking at a timing uh, issue. They called a jump ball on the floor. I don't think it hit the rim, it hit the backboard. But it's a jump ball, and they're just looking at some timing yep. issue right here, so. The reason why is because possession arrow goes to Baylor, and so they want to make sure they have the right time on the shot clock. Yes. Yep. Congratulations to Vic Schaefer while we have a moment, the number one seed, Mississippi State, and win over NC State. And NC State getting to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2007. Actually advanced to the Sweet 16 that year with a win over Baylor in Raleigh. That was. Uh, K. Yao's team at NC State. Our first window of Sweet 16 games. We've still got two more to come. Louisville Stanford here in Lexington and out in Kansas City, Texas, and UCLA. Four games for you tomorrow. We'll start it out at 11.30 in the morning and run all afternoon for you including South Carolina, UConn, Notre Dame, Oregon. And how about the Maction tomorrow with the pair of 11 seeds out of the back? Buffalo and Central Michigan crashing the party. Can they go even deeper? We'll find out tomorrow. The ball didn't hit the rim, so they went by possession, and it was a jump ball, and Baylor kept possession, and they score on the out-of-bounds play. Pivik back on the floor to handle the ball against Baylor's pressure with foul trouble. Pivik faces up. She's flirting with a triple-double despite all the foul problems tonight. The kick out for three, and it's good. Korsdale, a terrific job of relocating after you throw it into the post at an angle where Lauren Cox couldn't recover. And all Kim Mulkey could do was turn and shrug to her bench. Hey, we told them they got some shooters out there. Why would you take that three? Morris is the only player for Baylor that's hit one. That was too quick in the possession. One for ten now, Debbie, from downtown. They are outscoring Baylor beyond the arc. 24 to 3 tonight. And then you got Gulich, the counter inside. And Scott Ruick was able to get the timeout with seven seconds left on the shot clock. Baylor thought there should have been a travel before the timeout. 
Well, we knew coming in they could chuck it, and they have done just that, especially in this second half. Well, they've done a terrific job of moving without the basketball, playing off the elevator door screens, not once, but twice. Baylor late, closing out on the three-point line, and you don't let them catch and shoot. They're too good. Terrific job of relocating off the pass into the post at an angle where Lauren Cox had a difficult time recovering after she helped on the interior. Five for nine. Oregon State outside the three-point line in this half. Hey, don't forget the Around the Rim podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts, hosted by our buddy, LaChina Robinson. Uh, she'll be recording live at the Women's Final Four this year in Columbus, Ohio, with Around the Rim. Out of the timeout, if Oregon State cannot convert. And Cohen dribbled it off her foot out of bounds. Here comes the pressure, and I'm surprised Kim Mulkey doesn't get Kalani Brown out for a defensive possession. Actually, here she comes, right here. Yes, this is your athletic, long, defensive pressure lineup. Lauren Cox anchors the back of it as the defensive player of the year in the Big 12. Looking for some live ball turnovers here. And Williams, and they get the takeaway. We want to try to score quickly if you can, but now Oregon State has gotten back and set up their zone, so now you run your offense. Under three minutes to go. Cho, they're still probing from deep and still not getting anything. You gotta go to Lauren Cox right here. Here is Cox with a touch. The slash into the lane. Richards, no. Here's where Scott Ruick will be at his best with this team, if they can handle the basketball right here. Pivot under pressure and under duress by Morris. But this is a similar situation against Tennessee, Beth, and they handle the pressure late when Tennessee went to some full court pressure. And Lauren Cox is gonna pick up a foul off the ball. And that's it for Lauren Cox. She has fouled out of the game. Just her third DQ of the season. And that collision with Marie Gulich. She'll be replaced by Brown. Watch the inside. You see Lauren Cox runs right through Marie Gulich. So Cox will depart with 15 points, seven rebounds. And now the officials going to the review. As it stands, Marie Gulich would be at the free throw line. As that is also the fifth team foul on Baylor. Well, they're going to see if there was an elbow to the face. And see, some of this stuff that they're looking at, see there, which one? <laughs> I'm not sure which one they're looking at. The first one that Lauren Cox came through the lane or this one? See, not, to me, that's, that's just basketball that, yeah. play. That's yeah. just a foul, a common foul. This serves to play. And this serves as a timeout for both teams and a stoppage of the momentum, which this favors Baylor. It gives them a chance to get organized with their defense. Try and regroup. They have won 30 in a row, the Lady Bears have. So Gulich is being basically iced at the free throw line, yep. right? Wasn't she on yep. the free throw line to shoot free throws? So now you get, a, get them away from the line. You start talking about anything but the upcoming free throws. Talking strategy, they, they're gonna get back into that 2-3 zone and only one big girl to deal with and that would be Kalani Brown. What a postseason it would be for Oregon State. You go into Tennessee, you hand the Lady Vols their first home loss in postseason history. And now you're trying to follow it up by bouncing the two-seed Baylor. And 
it looks like Gulich will be at the line for a couple of free throws. Nothing. Incidental contact. Zero. You're looking at me like you're going to try and have incidental contact with me. I'm getting ready to second. post you up, Mullins. I'm getting ready to throw a flagrant at you. We don't need any more trips to the monitor. <laughs> what a night for Marie Gulich. 23 points, 8 rebounds. And Lauren Cox is fouled out. So right now, Gulich makes this an 8-point, 3-possession game. Stays at three possessions. And Baylor has not been able to hit a three. So if you're Baylor, you're coming down quickly yeah. and you're trying to score. Get the ball to Kalani Brown. Let her see if she can get an and one. Set your pressure. They have also taken Brown out after a big first half. She has just two baskets here in the second half. Well, Brown hasn't had any catches in the top of the offense either against a 2 3 zone. See, there's Brown. Throw it in there to her. Well, she kicked it back out, and Morris for three. Long rebound to Cho. Morris on the drive. That's more of her game, but they cannot knock down the layup. Which was a contested shot. Good job by Oregon State to rebound. Beavers with a chance to push this to 10 or more. Final minute and a half. This possession better end with Gulich, right? It's sure. got the mismatch with Morris. And Brown with the takeaway. Morris on the run. And one. That's a big play by the freshman. And we've said it before, but this is where you miss Christy Wallace, another veteran player, a point guard, a senior, a scorer, and a playmaker. And Morris does a good job of drawing some contact. Of course, Cat Tudor's going to say, she had the principal verticality on that. And now Baylor is forced to even take Kalani Brown out. So essentially five guards here defensively for Baylor. Well, you got to go with your pressure team. You got to go for steals, deflections. If you can run and jump, you run and jump. If you can get a chance to trap, you try to trap. They do not have fouls to give. And free throws coming up for Oregon State. This is an Oregon State team that only makes not nine free throws a game. And they have done a very good job of converting at the free throw line tonight. They have added this to their repertoire in the postseason because they are outscoring Baylor from the free throw line. They had a big advantage at the stripe through their first two rounds, so they are taking advantage of something new here in the postseason for Scott Ruhr. See, I'm surprised Kim Mulkey's not getting Kalani Brown back on the floor for a bucket on the lip. There she goes. She's trying to get her in right now. And now she will. She had to hustle to do it. And was fortunate that Pivik made that shot. Just throw it down to the block to Kalani Brown. Still a two-possession game, although the three has been ineffective. They're going to go to Morris instead, and there's a triple. Back-to-back three-point plays by the freshman, Alexis Morris. She's the only player for Baylor that's hit a three tonight. How about the job by Lex off the old-fashioned three, now going downtown for a triple, and a three-point game with 107 to go. This is a nice job of penetration into the gap of the zone and then a kick and a catch and shoot by Morris. A 6-0 Lex Morris run for Baylor. They'll get Brown back out, so they go to their short lineup. Offense, defense. The defensive player of the year on the bench, Lauren Cox with five fouls. Oh, so now they are going to go ahead and sub, try and sub Brown in, but no, they're not going to let her. You know Scott Ruick is prepared for this kind of pressure, considering the teams that he knew he had to face in this bracket. There really is not a weak free throw shooter to try and attack here, either for Baylor. And the Pac-12 is a good defensive team, good league. 
Southern Cal is probably the most pressured defensive team that they have seen besides Arizona State all year. I'd give UCLA a little bit of a nod there as well. But under, none of them like Baylor. Under a minute to go in a one possession game for a spot in the Elite Eight and Gulich will head to the line. Third on Richards. Gulich is four of seven from the strike. 24 points tonight. Wales the first. He has been terrific all game. He has been clutch late in the shot clock. She has done a nice job with her go-to and her counters. She's earned her way to the free throw line. will allow Baylor to advance to midcourt. Gulich with a couple of big free throws at the line. 26 points, nine rebounds for Marie. She's been terrific in the isolation. She's got the counter against 6'7", Kalani Brown. She can turn over either shoulder, left or right. The defensive player of the year, Lauren Cox. She's got a move for her, too. She's been fantastic. Scoring on the inside, and the four out, one in has worked around her offensively. And what a four she has really developed into. She's already got a 29 point game here in the postseason. Now 26 tonight, and with 49 seconds to go, still chances here for Baylor down five. Yeah, so it's a two possession game for Baylor. So with Kalani Brown on the floor, I say you go in there and get the quick two, and then you put your pressure on. Now, neither team has foul, or excuse me, Oregon State does have one foul to give, which could factor in if they, late on, if they need a three. Meaning Baylor looking for a three. Here's Morris, who has the last six points for Baylor. She'll try for three more. Nine in a row for Morris. And it's a two-point lead for Oregon State. So Baylor called the timeout. So. Scott Ruick cannot advance the ball unless he calls the timeout. Now, this is really interesting. Will he want to use the full floor? Will he want to use the whole length of the court to get the ball inbounds? Or will he want to advance it so he doesn't have to go against full court pressure? How about the courage of the freshman to stick a couple of triples back to back when Baylor hasn't had anything working outside the arc? with the exception of Morris. They were one for 12, Debbie, before these last two triples from Lex Morris. And it it does appear that Ruick will go ahead and let Baylor use the timeout and keep his so they'll have the whole floor to work with. As the freshman has come up big here in the final minute, Baylor is without Lauren Cox, she's fouled out. Baylor is also out of timeouts. Three left for Oregon State, and they also have the arrow. And now Scott Ruick is talking to the officials about his options. Jeff Walls and the top seed Louisville Cardinals waiting in the wings to face Stanford. And there is the timeout for Oregon State, so now they can advance. And he's already told the officials that he wants it table side to run this inbounds play. Now you gotta be strong with the basketball. You gotta know Baylor's gonna look for a trap, a tip, a deflection. With a two point game, Baylor doesn't need to foul. They can play good yep. defense and rebound. Now remember, this is the best rebounding team in the country. So you gotta rely on your defense here if you're Kim Mulkey and believe that you can turn them over or you can get a stop. And then you come back down and I say you go right inside to Kalani Brown or you look for Morris off the bounce. They are in the process of being out-rebounded for the first time all season. Looks like Cho is going to be on the ball. McWilliams is the inbounder for Oregon State. 40 seconds to go for a spot in the Elite Eight. You got to execute here if you're Oregon State. 
play good D, switch on everything, high hands on the catch. Trying to find a, an opportunity for Gulich. Pivik so methodical offensively. The kick out, Mick Williams for three, and she hits it! Oh, that is clutch, which makes it a two possession game. Now you gotta come down quickly and score. You can get a quick two. Morris will try for three way off. And they were lucky to get a break there, knocked out of bounds by the Beavers. 10 seconds to go. All game, Beth, I've been saying you can't help. On strong side corner, Baylor helps. McWilliams buries it. Ninth triple of the game. The first for McWilliams, and what a drive and dish by Pivik. She's got seven points, seven rebounds, and now nine assists tonight at the point. Hadn't played there since the seventh grade until they had to move her there this year due to the graduation of Sydney Weiss. If you've been following along, you have seen that Baylor has helped off the strong side corner all game. A couple of times they've been able to draw charges. This is a terrific read by Pivot in a clutch basket by Katie McWilliams. She's been averaging 12 points over the last four, and she was eight for 14 outside the arc coming into this game in the last four. That is a big bucket. The six seed, Oregon State, trying to knock out the two seed Baylor. The Lady Bears have won 30 games in a row and are in trouble here with 10 seconds to play. No good. Weak side Cohen Cho shot blocked by Corsdale. And that'll do it. Oregon State gets the upset of Baylor and moves on to the Elite Eight. The inside, Marie Gulich with 26. The outside, three point shooting, nine. Triples from four different players. And Oregon State gets the upset of Baylor. We talked at the beginning of the second half. Could Baylor make enough twos to match the threes? And the three by Katie McWilliams is the capper. A couple of teams have advanced. Mississippi State and Oregon State. We've still got two more games to go tonight. Texas UCLA and coming up here in Lexington, Louisville and Stanford. For Deb Antonelli and Allison Williams, I'm Beth Mowens. Now let's get you to Marie Taylor in the studio.